Welcome to Dead Bear Code, I'm Sean Beyer, and this is gonna be the first video of a series going over the basics of Fast API. And while we're doing that, we're gonna be implementing them into a FinTech Fast API application using Plaid and Fast API on our backend. These videos are meant to mimic the structure of the user tutorial guide on the official Fast API documentation. So each video will be building upon the previous one, but they'll also be useful as a standalone reference to come back to in the future. And the way each video is gonna be structured is the beginning is gonna be going over the Fast API topic, followed by putting that into an example using the FinTech Fast API application. I'll leave a link in the description back to the blog post for this video in case I have to make any updates. That way I can keep the blog post up to date. Fast API is a lightweight web framework in Python for building web APIs written by Sebastian Ramirez. Right away it comes with a ton of advantages with no extra work right out of the box. One of these being asynchronous support. In recent years, Python has added the async IO library, which allows support for asynchronous behavior in your Python programs. And what this means is that when you have a task that is gonna take some time, like say getting data from a database or making a network request, fetching something, um, normally with, a, with synchronous behavior, then that would block the entire program and you'd have to wait till that request finished and then it would proceed with the next step. Where asynchronous support allows you to say, hey, I know this is gonna take a while, so while this is going, go ahead and go do something else and come back and check on this later. And then once that's done, then you can move on. So it's sort of like multitasking in a way and can really boost performance in your web applications. Fast API is built around Starlet and Uvicorn, which were designed to have async support built in from the beginning. And in Fast API, you can easily use async by just adding the async await syntax into your code. Immediately you'll notice a massive reduction of code. In just five lines of code, you can have your API up and running. And everything is based around standards. It leverages Python's built-in type hints as well as the open API standard in order to automatically provide auto-completion and type checks in your editor, data validation and conversion on incoming and outgoing requests, and my personal favorite, auto-generated documentation that you can actually interact with and use in order to test and debug your API as you're building it. If you're not familiar with Plaid, you're probably using it every day in a bunch of your banking apps. It's used by Venmo, Coinbase, uh, Acorns, and it's a software that handles the security and logging in of your bank accounts for you so that way you can handle just working on the business logic of your application. And luckily Plaid has already built out a quick start example for us that comes with a React and TypeScript front end and a back end server side app that you can choose just about any language that you need. A quick caveat is this course is going to be focused on Fast API and not React or Plaid. So we won't be diving into any details on those topics. We'll be just keeping it focused on Fast API. We're going to be implementing the initial setup of Plaid, doing the authentication and being able to log into your bank. We're going to create new items, which Plaid calls bank accounts, checking balances, queries for transactions, and checking investment portfolios. On the Fast API side, we're gonna be going over creating models for request body data validation, creating response models. We're gonna cover error handling. We're gonna do some testing and debugging, as well as securing our endpoints with OAuth 2 and Fast API's built-in security tools. We're also gonna walk through some strategies for implementing environment variables, as well as Fast API's dependency injection system, which allows you to chain multiple functions and reuse them and write as little code as possible. And this just scratches the surface of what Fast API has to offer, so be sure to go read up on the user tutorial and the advanced tutorial over on the Fast API official documentation. If you're as excited about this course as I am, go ahead and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you get notified when each new video comes out. Thanks, I'll see you next time.